You are listening to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast, bite-sized episodes from one coach to another to help you create and scale your business with simplicity. No hustle required. Welcome back to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. Today, we're talking to Aria about how to get unstuck and out of your own way. I know we can all relate to this and Aria has some great tips for us and how we can get untangled and ready to move forward in our business. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Aria, thank you so much for being on the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. I'm so excited you're with us bright and early today. <laughs> well, it's early, not bright, no, but it's I'm not very, bright. Excited. <laughs> very excited to be here. I was looking at your Instagram and I was excited because I saw a testimonial on your post and it was, you are magical yourself. You untangled my brain in five minutes. And I thought that's awesome. Untangled my brain. So I'm excited to have you on. Cause I feel like everyone thinks there is just a mess of knots in their head sometimes. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about how you got started. All right. Well, thank you again for having me. So my name is Aria Lighty and I am the founder of the Mob Nation, which is a national alliance of mom-owned businesses. And I'm also a business mentor and mindset coach for women entrepreneurs. And I got started with the Mob Nation in 2012, actually, for the whole like hashtag mom boss culture. And I really just loved working with mom owned businesses. I was a um, brick and mortar owner and I was thinking, what am I doing? (laughs) Who is crazy enough to like start a business and have kids? And so I just kind of like went out searching for my people. And then the coaching and the business mentorship just really blossomed from that experience very organically, just from working with all of the different mom-owned businesses out there and seeing the same struggles, the same mindset issues, the same types of like creative blocks just popping up over and over again. So that has been a a beautiful journey for me for the past. I mean, being an official, having a title (laughs) as a, you know, consultant business mentor, that's been about five years now. I love that you help moms because I'm a mom, I have three kids of my own and I know what it feels like to feel like, okay, if I could just get one minute to myself, that would be great. Um, Maybe in five years or so, (laughs) I don't know. There's always somebody pulling at you. And then when you're trying to start a business and run a business, it can feel like, what, what was I thinking? (laughs) Right. It's the two, the two craziest, hardest things to do in this world. And then Mm -hmm. we were just you know, nuts enough to combine them. So (laughs) I mean, how nuts are we? We're up, you're up at 3 a.m. on a Saturday morning on a podcast (laughs) interview. (laughs) No, we're very strange creatures. We are. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. But I wouldn't have it any other way. No, I, I think it's so amazing to work with moms because they are great at coming up with solutions and they're also wanting to fix everything though. And I think that's where we can get really caught up in our business and where the tangles come in. What do you feel like is the biggest struggle for those moms who are growing their business? I think moms in general, we think that we have to be like martyrs for (laughs) our families. And then you add in, you know, the business aspect and we're martyrs for that as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that like not putting themselves first, like coming last in everything. And that same mentality that we kind of have of like coming last in the household, we often will do that in our business as well, like mm. pay ourselves last or, mm. you know, not set proper boundaries to make sure that we're only calling in dream clients or, you know, not just, just not building a sustainable mm-hmm. model in the background that keeps us fed and happy because we think that everything has to be hard. And, you know, unless mm-hmm. we're making these huge sacrifices for everybody, then we're not doing it right. Uh, that is just right on point. We think everything has to be hard yeah. and if we're not exhausted and tapped out, we're not doing something right. Why do we believe that? That's just what the stories have always been, you know, like we mm-hmm. watched that happen. I think that when women started entering the workforce, they weren't able to, you know, outsource the home life. They still mm-hmm. had to balance both of it and they had to make it look 
<laughs> like seamless and no complaints mm-hmm. because you know people would be like well then why did you even enter the mm-hmm. workforce in the first place so a lot of us still carry that on our shoulders we you know watched it be modeled by the women in our lives and mm-hmm. nobody told us that it could be any different mm-hmm. and so we just always are out there trying to make it worth it and trying to prove that we are great moms and great business mm-hmm. owners and and we don't need any you know help or coddling or you know <laughs> yes we're strong enough to do this Right. And we are, but what happens when we don't fill our cups? What happens to that mom who's running her business and is just going off of fumes? What happens to her? Yeah. I mean, you just get yourself into a space where you can't do it any longer. You know, it's like Mm -hmm. if you can fill your cup and it's not just pouring from an empty cup, like your cup needs to be overflowing and you need to share, you know, like that excess, the stuff that's in the saucer, because Mm -hmm. that's going to be the only way that you can consistently Mm -hmm. keep yourself full. But also we have to remember that our kids, like we get to break that cycle. Like I said, we saw that type of behavior be modeled. I definitely do not want my daughter like taking on that lifestyle Mm -hmm. or, you know, thinking she has to be a martyr. So once I kind of made that decision that like life did get to be easy or I did have to do things for myself, I know that that's breaking a cycle for her Mm -hmm. and that she's not going to take on that martyrdom when she goes into entrepreneurship or uh, Mm -hmm. relationships or motherhood or Mm -hmm. whatever she decides to do. I think that's such an important thing that nobody talks about is being a good example for your kids. It seems like the kid discussion is always left out of everything. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Or we think again, like they have to see us struggle so that we can prove how much we love them, but really we're Mm -hmm. showing them what type of lifestyle they can call in and what they can expect for themselves, how they treat themselves, how they talk to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think once you flip the script and you really think about it like that, then, you know, it's, it's hard for you to justify (laughs) beating yourself up or not pouring into self-care and not setting boundaries. Mm-hmm. No one can feel how you feel more than your kids. They right. know exactly what mom's going through. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And and on the business owner side, I mean, if your cup is full, then you're giving the best client experience. I know that we're talking to coaches mostly and like, that's even more of an important job to protect your boundaries, protect mm-hmm. your energy to, you know, create a safe space for yourself so that you can give that best experience and you can be completely dialed in to connect with your your clients and you're not Mm -hmm. burnt out and you you know so much of it is active listening and how can you be an active listener Mm -hmm. or you know a loving coach if you are like burnt out and exhausted and you know just worried Mm -hmm. about your own needs that are going unmet right I think the important thing now to go into is some symptoms of burnout, because sometimes we think if we're so in the thick of it, we don't even realize we're on the road to burnout. What are some symptoms of it? Exhaustion, wanting to just give up completely, Mm -hmm. lack of focus. I know that I just, you know, when I got really burnt out, every single task seemed so huge, you know, opening Mm -hmm. up my email, I would get like a sense of dread. The Mm -hmm. words would just not flow to me. Social media started feeling like a huge burden instead Mm -hmm. of like excitement to go share. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I think once you get to all of those kinds of spaces and I used to own brick and mortars, like I said, and I also used to live that hustle culture. Mm -hmm. So when I started struggling from burnout, I some people were like, oh, this is burnout. This is burnout. I was like, no, this is a burnout. My life is so much easier now. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> I would have got burned out, you know, from that type of lifestyle. I have no like right to be burnt out right now with this like easier workload. And, you know, and mm-hmm. it's not, that's not all that it is. You know, like emotional burnout is so real. The burnout from just the collective right now, from everything that we've gone through in the past Mm -hmm. few months, the burnout of just always being emotionally on and available Mm -hmm. for your clients or your, your kids. It's, it's a real thing. Yeah. We can't set hours for our kids, but I feel (laughs) like when coaches first start, 
they feel like they need to be on call, like their ER doctors mm-hmm. for their clients. <laughs> and I think the biggest problem is there are zero boundaries set with your business, especially I've been working from home for 16 years. And so I know what it's like to feel like you're always at work mm-hmm. and it's hard to shut that off. And that might be something where you walk out of your office, but yet your phone's with you and you're checking your email and you're responding yeah. to messages and boxers and you know, seeing notifications on your phone. And I remember thinking, this is so great. I have so many things on my phone that I need to take care of. And that is not a badge of honor for how successful your business is. (laughs) No boundary set is a setup for a disaster. Do you think that's a big problem with with new coaches, um, new business owners with boundaries? Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that women you know, they just always feel like they have to be accessible and that their energy has to be perfect. And then when you're setting out in business, you want to like prove that you're valuable. You know, you have that weight, that shadow over your head. that's like, I just charged people money for this. Mm. I have to like go and be, you know, my best self all the time or like overperform, over deliver in order to feel Mm -hmm. valuable and so yeah I see that quite often with my clients is right in the beginning they just they try to give way too much so that they can feel validated in charging you know that Mm -hmm. that amount for coaching so what happens when somebody gets on a call with you and they're feeling like everything's a mess in their head they don't even know what to do next is that the main problem when they come to you So let's let's talk about that. And then what do you do for them? Yeah, I would say that that typically, if you have booked a session with me, then you either have way too many creative ideas and you don't even know where to start, Mm -hmm. or you're kind of in that like creative paralysis where you're just like (laughs) staring Mm -hmm. blankly, not like not making moves in any Mm -hmm. direction. And yeah, most women will come in saying they don't know, or, you know, they want all this validation for their ideas. And a lot of it is just reminding them that they had a great idea and like Mm -hmm. getting them to listen to their gut, you know, having somebody else on the other line, like just listen to all of, I just let them brain dump and then, Mm -hmm. you know, take those little pieces. But sometimes it's just a question that's as simple as what do you want to be doing? You're like, well, I don't know. It's like, no, what do you want (laughs) to be Mm -hmm. doing and then there's always an answer for that you know but we just need permission Mm -hmm. or we need somebody to say like oh my god that is absolutely a brilliant idea and you're allowed to go do that and you're allowed to make money off of that and you're allowed to build it however the hell you want to you know Mm -hmm. permission came to my mind too is we're always looking for permission to move forward in our business and Mm -hmm the the notes and the post-its that we can write down all of our ideas and hidden on our desk in a stack of papers is not going to help anybody and right. then you're waiting for somebody else on the internet to say yeah that's a good idea before <laughs> you move forward why do we do that I don't know I haven't figured it out but I mean I I get in that same boat as well you know I think a lot of coaches think that since they're coach because you know, they don't have all the answers for themselves or their own business. They kind of feel Mm -hmm. like a fraud, like, oh, who am I to even (laughs) be coaching Mm -hmm. women or talking to business owners when I'm having this struggle. But I think we all need to have somebody else reflecting, you know, our ideas back to us and have that sounding board and, and have somebody say like, yeah, that's not crazy. That is really actually well, it, it is crazy, but it just might work. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you have this fantastic group of women, the Mob Nation, wow. who are all moms. They own a business. What's the kind of primary business that they mostly own? You know, our tagline is there's a mob for that because there really mm. is. So it is so diverse. I mean, you can go into our directory and find everything. We do have coaches lawyers, coffee shops, direct sales leaders, cosmetic companies, clothing designers, like anything that you can think of is Mm -hmm. 
you know, within this group of really powerful mobs and it's, it's really community over competition. So, Mm -hmm. you know, all the coaches that are in the mob nation, they are constantly like referring each other. They're doing collaborations. They're coming into each other's groups to, you know, chat with their different clients. Like it's, it's really beautiful to see, uh, especially some of the coaches that have been in it for a very long time, helping Mm -hmm. and mentoring or giving, you know, ideas to the newer coaches and reminding them to raise their prices and charge their Mm -hmm. value and, you know, all of that stuff. So I love that. I love that collaboration is such a big thing because I think it's such a lonely world, especially when you're just starting, you feel like Mm -hmm. the only person who knows about your business is maybe someone from your family, or maybe it's just you and you feel like you're doing this all by yourself. And it's so important to be a part of something, especially if you have the personality where you thrive off of like a group setting and we can't just go down the block and hang out with coaches, right? That's not, (laughs) that's not possible where I live. So I love that you do that and you encourage everyone to lift each other up and work with each other. What else is so special about the mom nation? Oh gosh, I couldn't, how much time do we have? (laughs) It is a national group. So it's very beautiful that you can make connections with somebody like I'm in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We have members, you know, on the West coast and the East coast when people go travel, they're always like, which mobs do I need to go support? Mm -hmm. Uh, Tell me which, you know, coffee shops are, or anything else is in this area. And the culture is unlike anything that I've ever seen. Like every day, I'm just like, still surprised by Mm -hmm. the amount of love that is poured in like we show up for each other in such massive ways like we just had a coffee shop that you know was struggling from covid and they did a cash mob in and she made in one day like what she usually makes in a month because everybody you know poured out to her shop and people that had never met her across the country were you know putting in online orders or you know sharing so because we've built such a strong, our own micro economy with that concept, there is a mob for that, then most of our business owners survived COVID, you know, thrived through mm-hmm. COVID when a lot of businesses were not, because we were already having that mentality of supporting right. each other first, you know, going to a mob first and investing in our own little community there. Amazing. Aria, tell us how people can be a part of this and where else they can find you. They can join the Mob Nation at themobnation.com and you can find me at arialighty.com and I'm also on Instagram at arialighty. Amazing. We will put all of those links in the show notes. You guys go show her some love and follow her, join her Mob Nation such an such an amazing group to be a part of and it's important for you to not only always grow in your business but to be a part of others who are doing the same thing on all levels so thank you for bringing this to light for us aria and for spending some time with us thank you so much thank you for this conversation i appreciate it before you go i want to invite you to join my free facebook group for coaches Simply type dreamclientcommunity.com in your browser, request access, and we'll happily let you in. We have amazing coaches in there just like you who are starting and scaling their business, and we would love to see you there.